Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels by Jacob R. Klein is a book about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It goes into detail about his miracles and parables, as well as what life was like in Judea and Galilee during the time of Jesus, as well as explain why, in spite of being obedient to his Father, God in heaven, he was a rebel against what people expected of a Savior or Messiah. This accessible, compulsively readable book tells the story of Jesus' life with different twists. You'll be enthralled by Jesus' teachings, appreciate the significance of his power to perform miracles, and dig deeper into the meaning of some of his best-known parables. You'll see connections between Jesus and the prophecies of the Old Testament. You'll walk alongside his first disciples and become entangled in the plot that led to his arrest, trial, and his death. But most of all, you'll see that all Jesus was obedient to his Father in heaven, he bucked convention in his life on earth, from the Romans and the Sanhedrin to everyday Jews and sometimes even his close friends. Jesus was perceived as a rebel who broke new ground in faith and action. Jacob R. Klein is a screen printer for J.N. White Precision Answers, a proud member of the Castile United Church of Christ, currently lives in Bliss, New York, and Jacob Klein, author of King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels, The Savior's Story, is our guest on This Week in America. Jacob, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Yeah, great to be here, Rick. Uh, I like to show people that uh, not only do uh, I have uh, published right now uh, King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels, yes. as you can see here, but I have also have uh, two previous works done. Uh, one is a uh, Stories of the Old Testament, as seen here. And the other one is Stories of the Old Testament, Savior Needed. And uh, all can be found in Outskirts, Amaz Outskirts Press, Amazon, and uh, Barnes & Noble. Or if you want to, you can look it up uh, Google for uh, to see if there are other various stores that sell the product. And it's very simple. It's Jacob, J-A-C-O-B-R, Klein, K-L-E-I-N. If you Google that, go to any of the sites and click on author information. You'll get information on all of the books. The uh, one website to go to for this book, King of Kings, is outskirtspress.com slash king of kings. We'll have all that on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Jacob, what inspired you to write this book? Well, I was um, a senior bank one day. Uh, I already had uh, gotten my two previous works uh, done and published. So I thought, okay, I want to do something about Jesus because the previous one, Stories of the Old Testament Savior Needed, I wrote a chapter on it that uh, kind of led up to uh, the story of Jesus, so to speak, dealt with the prophecies of the Messiah. So I was wondering, okay, how do I write about Jesus himself to the best of my ability because Jesus is just so many uh, things to so many people and You've got uh, like a whole bunch of uh, perspectives and stuff like that. Yes. Okay, so um, I thought, okay, what can I possibly write about Jesus? And I thought, okay, what what was Jesus? Uh, one of the things about Jesus is that people expected the Messiah, at least the Jewish people expected the Messiah to uh, come down break the tyranny of the Romans, you know, be a militaristic Messiah, you know, basically like a brave heart, so to speak. Yes, exactly. But, uh, yep. And uh, let's see, Romans, uh, they themselves were uh, known for uh, glorifying those who have won previous battles and being coming conquerors and stuff. But Jesus was different because Jesus, on with his life on earth, he was more of the servant. He was willing to give up his life. He was not willing to be a militaristic one. He was willing to be humiliated, die on the cross. And then even after all that, three days later, boom, rose from the yes. dead. Yeah, it's an amazing story. The book is called King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels, The Savior's Story by Jacob Klein, our guest on the program. It is, when you start reading the book, you, you can't put it down. It's an amazing perspective that Jacob offers on, on the life of Christ, the King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels. 
I, I want to get into that a little deeper here in a second, but it's interesting. You've got this book, several other books published. You've done such a, a wonderful job receiving excellent reviews. Have you always wanted to be a writer? How did this start for you? <laughs> uh, no, Rick. Uh, actually, uh, believe it or not, at first as a child and a teenager, I I actually wanted to become an NBA player. Uh, <laughs> In fact, uh, I wrote something down at one point where I said I was going to break Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's record for most career points. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, needless to say, after getting cut from the basketball team twice in high school and uh, the fact I'm a five foot nine guy who has almost zero leaping ability, uh, that was uh, something that was not going to happen. <laughs> that was going to plan B at that point. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh and uh, I do remember, though, during my senior year, uh, I was taking this uh, English t uh, class with uh, my teacher, uh, John Mertzak, at Electra Central School. And uh, I started to discover uh, with some of the assignments where uh, we would just write stuff down, like, uh, oh, for instance, so uh, we had this thing where uh, we had the murder suspect, murder victim, cause of death, uh, motive for the murder and stuff like that. I started to realize that I might actually have potential as a writer. Okay, so there's that. But then uh, it took a long time for me to uh, really uh, get initiated on that. In fact, it wasn't until around towards the end of 2012, um, Obama had just uh, been reelected. I was a little down on that being conservative and all. So, uh, Along the way, I decided, okay, I'm just going to write a personal diary of, um, you know, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yes. And writing that down, I realized, holy cow, I have a gift. I have a gift to actually write some stuff here. And so that was the inspiration for uh, the first book, Stories of the Old Testament. It took about a year and a half before I even... Uh, turn it over to a publishing company. And then from there on, I've been writing ever since and haven't turned back. Well, and we're the better for it because your books are touching so many people, especially this, this new one. I just love the concept. You're King of Kings, Rebel of mm -hmm. Rebels, the Savior story by Jacob Klein, our guest on the program. Klein, if you Google, is K-L-E-I-N, book available all the usual places. Also, outskirtspress.com slash King of Kings. We'll have that on our website. And I'll mention it again before we, we wrap up our conversation here. What advice would you give to aspiring writers? Because you went through what many aspiring writers, they haven't made that step yet. They keep thinking about it. They think they've got a talent. They think they want to do this. It's just difficult to get started. What advice would you give aspiring writers? Well, for one thing, I would say probably find something that you're passionate about, something that you are really interested in that's not necessarily writing related, but something that you can write about. But I would say more importantly is uh, just remember to glorify Christ in whatever writing you do, because uh, if you're not glorifying Christ, you could uh, write all the greatest books in the world, everything sounds all wonderful you make tons of money you got awards and stuff but at the end of the day if you're not glorifying christ your works are not going to really matter that much in the grand scheme of things it's interesting the perspective of someone who's done this successfully jacob klein author of king of kings rebel of rebels I share something about the book king of kings rebel of rebels that that isn't in the blurb i did a real quick job of sort of an overview of some of the fascinating aspects of the book uh, tell us a little bit more about it without giving everything away but tell us a little bit more it's it's such a fascinating uh engaging book mm -hmm. well one thing i could give you is that obviously i mentioned like you said earlier i was mentioning about the miracles and the parables of jesus and also his teachings his discipleship and stuff. Uh, one thing I like to point out is there is a point in time where Jesus is being sent to be crucified. And what I did was I would add the closest thing I could possibly think of to a modern equivalent of what the Romans put Jesus through on his uh, road to Calvary. And it, you'll read that and so much more in Jacob's book, King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels. 
as you were writing this book, what kind of challenges did you did you run into in writing King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels? Uh, I touched a little bit on it earlier, but one was how do you write about Jesus? And remember, for this particular book, unlike the first two that I wrote where uh, I could uh, slice it down in 10 chapters, this one, uh, I couldn't really do that. And plus, I was looking for a way to, like, to uh, cover as much of Jesus' life as I possibly could, based on the Gospels. The other thing was, uh, it just so happened that around the time that I was turning it into the my publishing company, Outskirts Press, that the pandemic COVID-19 happened. And, well, uh, that kind of dampened things. I, I didn't have as much uh, internet access as I would like to have yes. to uh, get it done. So that was a problem. And then, uh, yeah, I think that was about it. Those two big things. Jacob Klein, our guest on the program, talking about his book, King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels, The Savior's Story. This book has had such an impact on so many people, again, receiving rave reviews. What did this book, you humanize Jesus, you give us a different side. It's, it's, it's so enlightening as you read it. What did it do to you? What impact did writing this story, doing the research, writing the story have on you and your view of Jesus? Uh, it kind of, I would say it strengthened my faith even more. Yes, yes. Yeah, because uh, it, here was a guy being the son of God. Anyone could uh, judge the world, it would be him. Anyone that would pray about being how oh, he's almighty, all powerful and stuff on his life on earth, it would have been Jesus. He would have had the every right to say that he is literally holier than thou. Yes. Uh, but what did he do? He humbled himself. He served the people. He gave up his life on the cross. He died a humiliating death. People before Jesus who died on a cross, they were pretty much a bunch of nobodies, or at the very least were treated as a bunch of nobodies. And Jesus took what the Romans gave him, what the Sanhedrin gave him, and he came back. He came back so that we could be forgiven. That is the Jesus that I've come to love and know. And you bring him to life and you share that that side of Jesus with, again, you personalize, you humanize. And that's why the book is uh, it has touched so many people. Uh, time is going by so quickly. I want to talk a little bit about you and your books. Go through the other books again and where people can get information. I'm sure they're listening in, uh, in King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels. That's a book they need to read. The other books that you've written are equally as important. Where can people get more information on you and the other books? Okay, mainly, I would say mainly uh, Google's a very good source pretty much for anything, but yeah, especially my books. Uh, funny thing about the first one, Stories of the Old Testament there, uh, when I uh, published it originally, I... Uh, put down my author's name as just Jacob Klein. <laughs> Along the way, I found out that there just so happened to be a Russo-American philosopher with the same namesake who died seven <laughs> years before I was born. And I'm like, oh my word, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Another Jacob Klein. So if there's a reason why I had to put my middle initial R on it, uh, that's the reason. Well, and that's a good point. And let me emphasize that Jacob R. Klein and Klein is K-L-E-I-N. So that R is very important if you're uh, if you're Googling. I love the title of this book, King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels. How did you come up with the title? Uh, I think it was uh, when uh, a few years back, I actually bought this uh, DVD. Uh, it was a old time movie uh, starring Jeffrey Hunter named uh, King of Kings. And uh, along the way, I thought, hmm, let's see. We know Jesus is King of Kings. He's also called Lord of Lords. But he's bucking the conventional wisdom of what it's like to be a hero, a messiah, a savior. What if I called it? Oh, and by the way, also, uh, we're living in a society today that's kind of bucking against trends or at least bucking against uh, what we, uh, we thought was good back in the day. Yes. Like many moons ago. Yes. Okay, so I thought, 
with that in mind, that sounds like a rebel. And Jesus, if you're going to say he's king of kings, lord of lords, he goes all out to serve his father, all out in terms of serving people, or um, all out in terms of calling sin what it is sin. Why not make it all out and say, yep, Jesus is not only king of kings, he's rebel of rebels. That says so much and really describes very aptly the, uh, the, the content of the book, King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels, The Savior's Story by Jacob R. Klein, our guest on the program. What is it about the Bible that has stood the, the test of time? I think still the number one selling book in the world. Yeah, I believe it still is. Oh, think about this. Uh, we have the Jewish people. They uh, were captured by uh, the Babylonians in 586 BC. They could have uh, just done away with the culture right there. They could have destroyed the Jewish culture, make it make all of them uh, subservient to Babylon's culture. But the Jewish heritage continues. Also, we got, again, uh, 300 years later on, 300 years of persecutions from the Roman government who wanted to do away with the belief in Jesus, who did everything they could to discourage the belief in Jesus. Yet here we are 2,000 years later, we still believe it. Or at least there are people who still believe it, and many in the world of uh, something like, what, 2 billion that profess to be Christians? Yes. Yeah, so um, basically it stands the test of time because I would say it's been tested and refined and still at the end of the day it stands because of the people's uh, faith is a result from those tests and also because it's the word of God. God is going to ordain it. He's going to see to it that people know the word. Our guest is Jacob R. Klein, the author of King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels, The Savior's Story. That's what we're talking about on the program. We'll mention his other two books as we wrap up today's program. Unlike many Christian authors, Jacob, you're not a priest. You're not a minister. Why should people, why will people be interested in your books? Pete, I may not be a minister or a priest or a theologian or stuff like that, but I have always been taught the Word of God. In fact, uh, I remember uh, when I was 13 or 14, my mom would um, teach me with the book of Revelation, for instance. So there's that. There's also the fact that uh, in my job as a screen printer, I uh, get to uh, check out material, make sure it's good. And uh, if it's not good, find out why it's uh, a defect. That gives me a perspective of uh, kind of like a storytelling because, you know, just like writing a book, it's a story in itself. So to uh, the who, what, where, why of uh, screen printing, it gives me a kind of like a story of uh, what to look for. Interesting. So that part of your life, the, the professional part of your life, other than writing, sort of has an influence on your, your technique, your perspective as, as you're writing your books. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you mentioned the Bible, just mentioned Revelation. How does the Bible relate to the world today and will relate, I'm sure, in the years to come? I'm glad you asked that because I actually wrote a few things down myself here. Uh, for instance, uh, we are seeing a lot more signs today, uh, or at least paradigms of the end times, than probably uh, all of history. I mean, we've got, uh, I've uh, heard explanations about the murder hornets there that we've gotten last year, how. Uh, it has a molecular structure similar to Revelation 9. Uh, I also know, um, and this one I actually discovered recently, uh, there was uh, that shuttle SpaceX uh, Dragon there, right? Yes. Okay, SpaceX Dragon that uh, landed near the Pensacola coast, and it's like, okay, that's got my attention right away because of uh, Revelation 12, where the dragon, also known as Satan, goes up to heaven, fights against the uh, Michael, the archangel, his uh, fellow uh, soldiers of God, and uh, they win, and the dragon falls back down to earth. So that's kind of like a paradigm, so to speak, where a shuttle would take off to space, obviously, but then 
it came back down and it came back down. It just so happened uh, it came back down uh, near the Pensacola coast, which I thought was very interesting because there's a scripture from uh, Revelation 2 about a city, ancient city known as a Pergamum. Uh, that says that Pergamum was where the devil sits at his throne. And uh, another thing about Pergamum is uh, it originally came from the word Priam, meaning primary or utmost. Pensacola, Florida came from uh, the most Muscogean tribe, uh, hair people, or hair of the head people, also known as Pashi Okla. I hope I said that right. So there are those are similarities. Yes. Also, I found out that Pergamum. Oh, sorry for the interruption. Found out that Pergamum was uh, a coastal city in the, what is now Turkey. Well, Pensacola, Florida, that's also a coastal city. The more you talk, the more intriguing it gets. I just uh, it, it, there is a relevance today, just as there has been uh, in, in all the centuries uh, since uh, since the Bible was written. We're rapidly running out of time, but I want to take a minute or so before we wrap up and talk about the other books again. Any last words for for the audience? We're talking specifically about King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels, but you've you've done so much work. Any particular thoughts before we conclude the conversation today? Okay, uh, obviously, um, like I mentioned earlier, stories of the Old Testament uh, and stories of the Old Testament save your need that they can be found uh, outskirts. Amazon, Outskirts Press, I should say, uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, especially Stories of the Old Testament. I mean, this has been around for five years. Uh, so you could get some great deals on those. Uh, other th- the other thing i like to point out, though, is that we're living in a time where we're calling good evil and evil good. I mean, we're seeing it where uh, you got uh, a movement that we're dedicating for an entire month that preaches tolerance. Yet when you speak about uh, the fact that that lifestyle is a sin, people are going to bash you for it. And then there's uh, also abortion and how there are people that seem to treat it like a demigod. You call that what it is, basically inventive side of murder. And they're going to bash you on that too. So we got to stay steadfast in God's word and not compromise on what the world tells us at large. And you are doing that in your, in your writings. What are you working on now? We've talked about the past books, the most recent King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels. What are you working on now? Uh, I'm kind of working on, uh, I guess you could say a commentary. Uh, right now it's just, uh, the rough dress stages, but, uh, I'm working on that and looking for uh, new perspectives along the way, pretty much uh, watching what the world's going on too, by the way. So there's that. Uh, and uh, I also uh, recently started a, a little page uh, there on locals.com, the uh, SJ Fire. Hope to get uh, some more good material there. Fantastic. And we will be following you and hopefully a new book comes up. We'll have a chance to, uh, to talk about that as well. Our guest, Jacob J-A-C-O-B-R, Klein, K-L-E-I-N. R is important if you're just Googling, as we find out. There's another, was another Jason uh, Klein out there, Jacob Klein out there, so we need to get that R in there. This particular book is King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels, The Savior's Story. You'll find it at Amazon, the usual places. Specifically, you can go to outskirtspress.com forward slash King of Kings, and you'll get information there as well. And I think any of those sites, if you just click on author information, you'll get access to the other books that uh, Jacob has written as well. Jacob, a pleasure having you on the program. Excellent job with this book, King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels, The Savior's Story. Thank you for sharing uh, all the background with us on the program today. Good luck, and hopefully we'll have a chance to do this again. Thank you. Yep, thank you for having me there. Uh, God bless and take care. It has been our pleasure. Jacob R. Klein, King of King, Rebel of Rebels, the Savior Story information, of course, for this and his other books on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Back on today's program, after these messages.